client was very upset and I'm like, I talked to Emma. I'm like, hey, what's going on with this client? Why is she so upset? And Emma's like, I honestly can't. I don't understand. Like, she was chilling in our <laughs> conversation. He said, no, nope. uh, no. In fact, we're going to sue you because you are like, I think it was for defamation or something. Like you are ruining, you ruined our company's reputation. Welcome back to the Journey Podcast. I'm your co-host, Emma Jackson. And I'm Jose. Emma, today I want to take this podcast a little bit different. Okay. The last ones we've been kind of talking to some really cool guests. We've been having really um, interesting business conversations. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the worst, absolutely worst customer experiences that we had. And me, you've been put through the ringer. <laughs> I think anyone that's ever worked in a service-based industry knows what we're talking about. Yeah. You will have some of the most angelic, wonderful customers, and then you'll have the the nightmares. But I want to <laughs> I want I, I want to end this with like a positive note. Like yes, these are the worst experiences we had, but these are what we learned. Exactly. And yeah. how we applied it to our new services that we're launching or relaunched. Yeah. No, maybe people can learn from our uh, our mistakes. So mm -hmm. <laughs> tell me, what's your worst customer interaction experience that you have okay i have a few but i'll start with one of the very first okay so imagine i'm 22 i have no idea what i'm doing in terms of running a real business like i knew how to build websites i knew how to do marketing but i did not know anything about the operational side the of operational things. side okay Makes so sense. walk in with this this you know he seems like a big wig he kind of plays off that he, he runs what was his industry uh storage i think it was like storage units or store some sort of like storage situation okay, okay. and um they were they wanted to expand really quickly there are a lot of like you learn red flags real quick when you have been in business longer there are people who come across as like super aggressive and pushy and it can be a little bit too much back then i was like cool we'll help you grow this is great <laughs> i can totally <laughs> see emma 22 like yes let's I was go like, yes, i got a sale i know i did i literally this was when i tell you it was like my first month in and i was like okay we got to figure this out we got to make this happen and i uh you know, this guy's like, yes, I want to, I've got money to spend. I want to put money behind this, blah, blah, blah. Let's go want it to be nationwide. So obviously when you want to run, when you want to run a nationwide ad campaign and you come to a, you know, a boutique agency, you, we work with an ad buying partner. So we had this contracted out this partner and this is before I knew anything about how to set up deals or organizations. So we contract the ad buyer. We're in the whole like 10 grand on this because they, the goal, like we had, so, you know, he was supposed well, to pay us. With 10 grams of deposit, right? I'm assuming 10 grams of deposit because that's kind of low for a nationwide ad. No, it was just the first, it was like the first few weeks, <laughs> yeah, of which were, were 10 grand. And um, yeah, it was a deposit and then they were supposed to be paying us on a monthly basis and then we would pay the media company and then we would do the strategy work and all of that. And I kid you not, three days into the campaign, I get this angry phone call from this guy yelling, screaming, I'm not getting clicks, blah, blah, blah. I'm not getting calls. I'm like, it's been three days. And actually we had calls recorded because of it was all, it was all tracking. So we could see that people called and his team didn't answer the phone. They just kept ringing and ringing. And we were like, hey, I think you need to answer the phone. And then he decided, nope, I don't want to work with you guys anymore. Like just like totally flipped a switch. And we were like, cool, but you still have to pay like the 10 grand. That wasn't even like... That was not even owed to us. Like, we had to pay this other company. And he knew he was a big fish and knew he was working with um, a, small a smaller agency. And he said, nope, uh, no. In fact, we're going to sue you because you are, like, I think it was for defamation or something. Like, you are ruining, you ruined our company's reputation for a three-day ad campaign in which <laughs> lots of people called, but they just didn't pick up the phones. And so they send this crazy. super scary letter. I've never been sued in my entire life. I don't know what, and I'm over here like crying, like, oh my gosh, what the heck? I did not sign up for this when I, you know, came in to take over this family business. And we had to get lawyers involved. And then we found out like, okay, it was basically just a scare tactic, but we had to pay money to like an expensive lawyer to basically say you have no basis. So that was like the worst to begin with. But guess what? Talk to me. We didn't have contracts. Like at all. There was no... Whoa. You So you did a deal. Let me get this right. You did a deal where you're pretty much a middleman, right? Creating the strategy and creating the media that this company was going to use on their advertising nationwide. Mm -hmm. And you contracted out the media buyer. Oh, and we had a... The media buyer had a contract with us, so we were on the hook for that money for sure. Mm. But you know what? So, okay, talking about coming in from a family business perspective, 
my dad came from the generation of handshake deals and they just had never done contracts. And I didn't even think. So who established the service agreements we use now? Uh, I did. <laughs> I, I, after that, no, 100%. So now we have like, we have service agreements with pretty extensive contracts that are fair and transparent on both sides. But it started there because I was like, hey, I was like, because I was working with my mom at the time. And I was like, hey, mom, like, what do we do in this situation? Like, surely he can't just not pay us the money, right? Like, we have an agreement signed somewhere. And we like went and looked and she's like, no, like, we just have always done it on a handshake and a trust. And I was like, trust? Oh my God. Handshake? No. And the thing is, it sucks, but that's just not the world we live in anymore. You know what that reminds me of? Um, remember, I want to say like two years ago. He wasn't our client. It was a roofing company that were running Google Ads. Mm-hmm. And he got so angry at our second meeting. Remember with our sales rep? Yeah. And because he was like, I'm paying all this money. And we're like, bro, we're not even your, we're not, we're, we didn't work for you yet. Like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. That, people are, can be wild. Like, they will come to us, like, they've had a bad experience with someone else, but sometimes they, like, still, like, think they're working with the bad. And we're like, you haven't even started working with us, dude. Like, all that happened with some other company. And I don't know, like, we, we can help you. We can be here. I think, I think the aggression sometimes is misplaced. Yeah, it uh, usually comes from people honestly getting screwed over or having a bad, like this guy in particular, my first interaction was a bad guy. We found out later had a horrible reputation, but that's in the minority. A lot of times people just, they get stressed. They, they care so much. Like, Jose, mm -hmm. do you remember that lovely, honestly, lovely website client and um, who was very passionate about her website? You know, when you had to pull over on the side of the road and Puerto yeah, Rico. And take a two-hour <laughs> long conversation. Uh, so technically, I, okay, let me tell you the story, right? Uh, my dear friend, Emma Jackson, she's working with this client, right? Uh, I think it was like three months at this point. Um, and yeah. we're coming to like the end of the website. We're turning over the website to the oh, client. Oh, by the way, the way it works is they have seen, like we have done a design, they have approved it, then we go and do more pages, they approve it like every step of the way. So theoretically, it was like all approved all the way. Exactly, and for you guys who don't know, I don't really develop websites. I sell the websites, but Emma and her team kind of like actually delivers the final product of the website. So I'm not really involved that much. So all I know is um, from my point of view, this is my point of view, um, the client was very upset. And I'm like, I talked to Emma. I'm like, hey, what's going on with this client? Why is she so upset? And Emma's like, I honestly can't. I don't understand. Like, she was chilling <laughs> in our conversations. <laughs> but she was like, very, very upset, like to the point that tears came out, and I think she has so much anxiety. anxiety. That's thing that was yeah. So I'm oh like, cool. I got a two-hour drive. I'm going from um, Umagao to Santa Isabela, um, and I was like, or Isabela, in Puerto Rico. I'm like, I got a two-hour drive. Let me give her a call on the way to Isabela and see what's kind of going on. And I get on the call, and she starts talking and talking. And at this point, I, I'm like, okay, for, she's not really, she doesn't really want to have a strategy conversation what's going on. She just on. needs to vent. She needs, needs to vent. Sometimes you got to be the therapist, <laughs> I think, as a, like an agency or someone that works in the service space. Like, you're kind of the therapist. Exactly. To the point that I had to bring um, your mom into the conversation. I'm like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. At the time, my mom was working with us. Yeah, I needed somebody to take notes because the conversation started getting a little productive, right? Then, I don't know what happened. I hit some construction zone. Busted both my tires, my backward tires just exploded. I'm literally like swerving on the side of the highway, kind of pulling over, going like three miles per hour, oh, trying gosh. to find an exit. And if you guys have ever been to Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico is one of the most beautiful islands in the world. But they don't have like garage stations, like the highways. Structures maybe a little bit. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's not. Yeah, it's a territory. It's a beautiful island. I love it. On my like, I love it. But. It's not as easily to find a gas station where you can pull over. You have to drive a couple miles between gas stations, right? So I'm in the side of the road, and she's. I'm like, hey, there's an. I have to get off the phone. There's an emergency. And she's like, wait, wait, one more minute, <laughs> one more minute. That minute turned into like an extra hour, Emma. And I think I'm so sorry. Yeah, for my so for what I learned about that experience was like sometimes we just have to be sit back, let the customer vent, and then. Honestly, I don't even think we changed that much. We changed a couple of pictures and she left the website at the end of the day. Yeah. I think sometimes the benefit of having a partner is that a client can get, sometimes you can get too close to a project. A client can get upset or frustrated or the communication's not there. And then you can have someone else that can just kind of take the burden on. Because now, Talk, I mean. You're talking about burdens. <laughs> Christmas. Remember that client Christmas? Ooh. Yeah, yeah we that's had a, not good. We had a client that I have never worked with. And Emma decided to take vacation. 
she planned for months ahead to go to a different country, And Japan. not just me, our entire <laughs> team, like our lead graphic designer was taking Christmas break off to spend with her family, as she should. Of course. This is the holidays. We were all taking time off. I was going to Chicago. I think it was a couple of days before I went to it Chicago. It was the last week before we everyone went on Christmas break. So we we already have our pipeline of work. We have all this stuff that we're like running through. Our days are super Keep packed. Keep in mind, we pack our production schedule like Three to four weeks beforehand. Oh, yeah. We plan. We told all of our clients. Everyone knows we're doing this, this. If you want to, you know, fit in work before Christmas, get it in by X date. Yeah. Uh, Our employee, Casey, right? The one that kind of edits our stuff. Phenomenal. Shout out, Casey. What's up, Casey? Um, She gets a phone call. And it's like, I don't know who this is, but they just kind of yell at me. And uh, I think we should call them back. (laughs) (laughs) So I get on the phone. I I call the client back. And keep in mind. Never worked with them. I know them by just because they're a client of us, graphic design, not my department. Cool. So I get on the phone call and say, I'm hey. sensing a trend here. You kind of have to deal with all yeah. the clients. So I get on the phone call, and she doesn't let me take a, like, a word in. She's like, we need this right now. And I'm like, you need what right now? She's like, this brochure, it needs to come out. I'm like, did you guys put this in the pipeline? She's like, we emailed Emma. Cool. When did you email Emma? Two days ago. She's out of the country. She sent an email that she's going to be out of the country. Oh, yeah, that was, and I had already been, I had finished another project for uh, that company in a different department, and we were all yeah. good. Everyone knew I was going to be out, and yeah. Yeah, I think the stress of, like, the deadline that she was, like, feeling, she put it on us, but with yeah. anger. No, I think the thing is, when you first start out, you feel like all of that is directed towards you. The anger, the stress, the upset clients. And I think the more we've gone, the more we've been able to detach and be like, oh, that's not on us. Like, they are dealing with some stress, some issue, whatever, and then we just end up being, you know, sometimes the punching bag. I made the comment. I'm like, you sound very upset. Can I know why? (laughs) (laughs) And then she kind of told me more why she was upset. I'm like, I can can understand that. But at the end of the day, you know, we need a little bit more lead time to actually facilitate what you want. So essentially you're saying that you have to set up boundaries to a certain degree with clients, right? Oh, yes. I have learned the hard way if you don't put boundaries in place, they're going to call you at 2 in the morning, they're going to send you emails, they're going to blow you up. And I think that's the mistakes I made when I was first starting off. I did the same um, thing. Yeah, because when I was, you know, when you when you start any company, you're like, let's take NAV. When I opened up NAV, I was really focused on customer service and, and like, putting my merchandise in stores. So mm-hmm. anytime a vendor wanted my merchandise, I, I picked up the phone and, like, hey, we bought X amount of units, we only sold this many units, can you buy back these units? And typically I didn't buy back, so I was like, yeah, sure, I'll buy it back for you. But that set a bad precedence moving forward. Mm-hmm. Because when we did a couple more merch drops, they it was harder to get in the stores, they felt like they could push their limits with me. Yeah. And it was a really uncomfortable situation for me because I'm out of money. Like, I bought this merchandise to put on their stores. They ordered X amount of units, but they wanted us to buy back. You know what I'm saying? Which was a very sticky situation. No, I agree. At the end of the day, you have to establish boundaries and let people know that while you can be there to help, if you bend over backwards and they can see that, people will often push and they'll just see exactly how much you can give. And I did that a lot because I just, I do, I really care about doing the best job possible. And the people we work with, I want them to succeed. But sometimes that's backfired, you you know? know? Talking about about lawsuits earlier, um, on the same company now, right? We did this collaboration with this coffee company. Mm-hmm. And I remember my sister, Gretchen, she was still working on her portfolio for graphic design school. And she came up with some really cool uh, artwork for the collaboration. And I'm like geeked, right? Well, number one, I love the coffee. It was a great coffee shop. I still go there to this day when I go back in town, right? Um, but we decided to do a collaboration between three companies. Nav, which is my clothing company, Classic Guys Barbershop, my barbershop, and their coffee shop. So their coffee shop supplied us cold brew for the shop. We put the, it was like a massive collaboration between three companies. And I was geek because it was my first real big collaboration. And you're like, but, this is it. We haven't made. We're yeah. on the path through to success. And it was my first time putting merch in stores. And it was not just one store, but was, they had six stores. Yeah. So it was like, it was pretty big. And it's not like in one small location. Now they had Chicago, Michigan City, Valpo, Chesterton. It was like spread out. So I was geeked. It was like my first like real break. What happens? We order a crap ton of merchandise. The They approve all the design. They love it. We order sizes. Cool. They did not want to pay the initial upfront cost for the merchandise. And I'm like, huh, cool. 
we had a contract that stated like, hey, we're going to go 50-50 on the cost of the merchandise and we split the profits, yada, yada, right? A profit sharing agreement. Um, and they didn't want to affront him. And, I, and I'm being naive. And, you know what I'm saying? I'm dealing with uh, the manager, the money manager. And a lot of times when you're a new company and more, more established companies, they will push bully the bounds. They and, will bull- they that's do, what they I'm bully. Yeah. Um, I'm like, cool. I want this to go out. Like, this is my big break, right? Yeah. So I'm like, don't even trip. I'll front every cost. I maxed out a couple of credit cards. <laughs> um, and this is before, like, you know, like, I, I pretty much hit success with the barbershop. And I'm, I'm maxing out every single credit card to actually purchase the, the line. And cool, we purchased the line. It comes in. They looked at it. They, they, everybody's in love with it. All the employees get um, shirts. And I'm like, red flag number one. They gave shirts out to all their employees, and that was not part of the agreement. And, and you're like, where's, where's my check for that? Like, yeah, they didn't <laughs> want to pay for it. They're like, hey, how are we going to promote the brand? I was like, all right, cool, say less. So that's like they're pushing again, they're pushing again. It's hey, little steps, right? Exactly. What happens? Two months later, we had a contract every 90 days. We would reevaluate the sales of the merch, online sales versus in-store sales, and then we will cut the check. They were supposed to cut me the check from their sales, mm-hmm. right? And then we supposed to, like, there was supposed to be like open books and stuff like that, X, Y, and Z. Uh, they never cut me a check. Ever? Ever. You didn't receive a single dollar single for your penny. Investment. When I went to Danny, our lawyer, to try to, like, hey, how can we fight this? And he looked at me. He was like, Jose, how much money have you invested in this? I'm like, all right, let's be honest. I think I put, like, maybe 10, 12 Gs into the merch line, plus not including Gretchen's time, my time, or anything mm-hmm. else. He's like, their resources will kick your ass in small claims court. This is exactly <laughs> what happened to me. That Like, you – and the thing is they know that. big Bigger businesses, they will get into situations, they will bully small businesses because they know that you would, like, at the end of the day – like we never got that ten thousand dollars back was, from that first customer because we went to our lawyer and they said, "Listen, do you know how much it's going to cost to even take this to court?" And then yeah. his resources, they will just outnumber you. The thing too is like I never had proof of the sales because they never gave us sales reports or because it was like, "Hey, yeah, yeah, no, they're selling it great. It's great. Cool. Can yeah. I get a report? Yeah, I'll email it to you. Never email it to me. Yeah. So I'm out like ten, twelve G's. The the multiple on that I think it was going to be like close to like sixty, seventy k. We saw every single product perfectly, you know what I'm saying? Um, never saw a penny. So what have you learned, and what are we doing differently? Deposits. <laughs> <laughs> Deposits. No, on a serious note, I think is what you said, contracts are very important, but not even the contract. It's like having the infrastructure to back up that contract. Everything, get it in writing. Get everything in writing. Because the thing is, I cannot tell you how many phone conversations I had with people, and later they would blatantly say, I didn't say that. And the thing is, if you only have hearsay, you have nothing. But if you have an email, you know, at the end of the day, yes, your job is to make sure the customer gets what they, you know. I take that pursuit, but I also learn it's like I have to protect myself. So every single day I'm taking deposits. I'm making sure that I'm not doing bad financial business, if that makes any sense. I'm making sure. Yeah. So, for example, I'm not going to make a deal. I'm not going to make a move in, in any client work until at least my costs are covered and there's some profits on top of the cost for the initial move. Mm-hmm. For example, if we take a website and we break up the website in three different payments, right? Um, let's say. Yeah, yeah. So that we have different stages. And you know what? That makes the customer feel comfortable, too, because they're not giving, and, you know, they get like they give a little bit and then we show work and then they give more and we show more work. And, and I cushion it where every single stage, we still have some type of profit in every single stage. Mm-hmm. So even if the client like decides like halfway through the project, cancel the project, I'm not out cost. I'm out, I'm out a little bit of future profit, but yeah. I'm still. And these are the things that no one tells you. And so I am really glad we're talking about this because when I first started out, we lost so much money that way because sometimes it's a personality conflict sometimes it has nothing to do with you and the business loses the the funds the resources they thought they had available and I was upside down on at least three different websites before I learned that we needed to break it up into payments because a website tends to be a bigger project you know Uh, and I think I was the one that kind of brought that into the table right yeah well in in a way that was like would work for both the business, you know, for us and the client. Because I was like, no, 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 like, no one's going to want to work with us unless we show them the work first, you know, unless, like, they're not going to just, like, give us all of the website money right up front. And you were like, no, but we can stage it out. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I learned the reason I brought that into the table is because of that situation. So basically all of our past experiences are what's allowing us to to move forward in this 100%. way. hundred percent. I think uh, we're anything in life, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's it's a buildup. Like, for example, like the quality of this podcast, 
it was it's it's easily a year in the making, more than a year. Yeah. Nav was what three years, four years ago for me. Mm-hmm. And, and I've been, I mean, I've been working in marketing now, like leading this the idea farm. I was leading it two, three years before I met you, so it's been like five years of, and it feels like I'm just now like, oh, oh, I'm starting to understand cus, and you still learn stuff every single day, but it's like I'm starting to understand customers. I'm starting to understand how to protect ourselves, but also be really transparent and honest. I feel like there's so much dishonesty in business these days. <laughs> like so much. You're preaching to the choir. <laughs> and we often get clients who come to us and who are super nervous and they're wary because they've been burned in the past. And so the more honest and transparent we can be, where we're like, this is what you're getting into. This is what our costs are. I feel like everyone's happier. No, 100%. Um, I agree with you 100%. I think at the end of the day is that... Um, Proof of concept with great financial business knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. We have the product that you want and you know it's good because our our our, our history and we could deliver it to you, but we're also not going to make a move that's going to screw ourselves in the process. Something else I've learned is you can have the best possible product, but if you have bad communication, it's not going to matter because people care about the relationship that you build with them. And I am someone that gets so head down focused on the work that my first few years in business, I completely forgot about the relationship building part. I thought, oh, they want a website or, you know, they want an ad campaign. I'm going to do that to the best of my ability. But I didn't really check in with them. I didn't ask how they were doing. And at the end of the day, even if the product was good, they may not have been that happy because they wanted that relationship. I agree. I think I've been more. So for me, Personally, if you look at my history of, of all my partnerships and business, I'm not the one kind of executing the work sometimes. Like, for example, I don't cut hair, but I want a barbershop. I'm more of like that person that creates those relationships with not only the, the team members, but the community to make sure that that business flourishes. You kind of feel me? Well, I think you're the one that taught me, too. I was starting and kind of struggling to figure out that balance between doing the work and also building that relationship. And I think it was you who said, Emma, just a lot of times people just want to know. Hi, how are you doing? Like, hi, how are you doing? He's like, so why don't you just check in with those clients? And I'm like, but what if I don't have anything to show them because the reports aren't to the end of the month or whatever? He's like, it's not about that. They honestly just like, they want to develop a relationship with you. And that's been the best piece of advice for building relationships because I do really care, but I didn't know. I thought I needed to provide something and present something every single time. But what you're providing is you well let's you know? talk about so on that same note i think we should kind of make it clear sometimes it's like it's a give and take with the client right so we can't communicate but if the client doesn't want to communicate back we have to tell that back no that's true a lot of times we work with very very busy businesses businesses where they are growing they're scaling and there may be an intensive period where they're like super hands on deck they want to go to every single meeting they want to talk to you all the time and then there's their communication will drop off and usually that's when business is picking up what we're doing is working and that means, you've taught me too, we got to adapt our communication style. Mm-hmm. So even in the beginning, if that even if that's what they requested, they want weekly meetings, they want check-ins, all this stuff, but if they stop being able to respond, we have to adapt. I have, so the client I picked up um, recently for the new website that I'm kind of kind of liaison, I actually do work in this company sometimes. Um, <laughs> at the beginning, they were really, really, one, they sent a crazy deposit for this website. And I was like, cool, say less. It means... I assume because it's in such a big deposit, they wanted to move this website really, really fast, mm-hmm. right? And well, so I started. I started communication. I called them. Hey, how you doing? Can I get X, Y, and Z so we can send you your first couple mockups? Because a lot of times clients are like, "Can you get this done in this timeline? Like, we really want to get this done as soon as possible." And <laughs> and that's the cool thing. This this client, they had a timeline they want to hit, which definitely not going to hit that timeline. <laughs> Um, but not but, not on our part. <laughs> yeah, not on our part. But they're they want to secure our. I guess they want to secure our slot, their slot with us for us to develop the project. Mm-hmm. So they gave us a really big check up front. But here's what I learned, right? So I called them a couple of times. I'm like, hey, I still haven't got these deliverable. And we, from our first initial meeting, these are your dates that you're supposed to deliver this to me that you established. He said, listen, we're busy. We're developing three new products to launch on the site. How about you just send me an email and give me the information that you need from me and I'll reply to you. Cool. The first two weeks worked perfectly. Now, no emails. But what I do now is I send her an email and say, hey, just checking in. Mm -hmm. When you're available 
and you want to send me an update on the timeline or on the on the deliverables, hit me up. Here's my cell. That's the other thing about being in a service-based business is you think, oh, my gosh, people are coming to us. They establish this timeline, and then they disappear, and you're like, um, hello. Like, you want to push them to move a project along because it's good for you, but you forget they are running their own businesses, and they're, they have so much going on. What I love about this client is the respect they gave us to, one, let us know what's going on in their business. Mm-hmm. Two, that check, that deposit <laughs> was love because it, it, they, it tells me they're super serious about this, but they have to prioritize the development of their products before the website, which is understandable. Yeah. So at the end of the day, like understanding, once again, comes back to communication, checking in, knowing, you know, what that ebb and flow is. And we usually can can find a really good balance. Like, yes, we're talking about, oh, my gosh, all the stuff that went wrong. But we've had a ton. We wouldn't be here if we didn't have a lot that went right. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm getting emotional. Some good <laughs> stories. Now, we... I guess we talked about the bad. We also had a really, honestly, we had some really good clients over the years. Oh, yeah. We have learned a lot from our clients, too. Mm. Good no, stories. occasionally I'll get messages. I got one this weekend, actually, and just totally unprompted. That was like, hey, by the way, I, I have a list of the advice you've given me, and every time I come across a challenge that I don't know how to face, I look back at the advice, and I was like, you've been writing down my advice? Really? And it was just a reminder that when you do develop long-term relationships, it can make a huge difference. You know, one that really touched me um, emotionally, of course, um, the dentist that from South Carolina, mm-hmm. um, that she was purchasing the new company, and then we came in, and oh, yeah. I said a couple words about like, hey, um, I've opening, you know, opened a couple of different businesses. I bought a couple of different businesses. I sold a couple of different businesses. Um, this is kind of like my strategy that I do when I, I take over a new company or... I well, yeah. So she, this this client had uh, purchased a new business. It was a really exciting moment in their career, but... Peak, I would say like they were just peaking. They were. But when you uh, purchase an already established business with staff members, you're coming in, no matter what it is, not everyone is going to be on board. And this person is the sweetest person on the face of the earth. And yet some of the staff members, they just, they didn't, they don't like change. At the end of the day, some people don't like change and they were really hesitant. They didn't want to work with her. And not just that, they were pretty mean. Like They were mean to you. They were mean, they, they were mean to everyone. So, uh, and your advice, Jose, because I mean, she was breaking down in tears just in terms of, I feel so lonely. I've, I've left everything. I've made this big, commitment. you know, in commitment. And now I feel like I'm in a place and I don't know if I belong here, which is something I think a lot of people can relate I, to. True. I was feeling like that a couple of months ago when we moved to Houston. I'm like, man, I was a few months before that. I was in Puerto Rico on a beautiful island and a beautiful beach. Me and Emma, we had our, you know, we were grooving and then we made this pivot change. But the thing is, you have to get uncomfortable if you really want to grow. And so what was your, like, what advice did you, did you give her? Because it was kind of unexpected, you know, just the, the raw honesty of, I don't know if I can do this. I said, at the end of the day, is like you're in, she, number one. She she kills what she does. She's an expert. One of the best, most professional, smartest, incredible business leaders. And yeah. kind. She's a so kind human kind. being. Yeah. Um, I was like, listen, at the end of the day, you're great at what you do. And if the people around you can't see that, eliminate them. You need to build a team and support network that you can deliver the same quality product you did before, but even better. And that they can uplift you because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, there has to be this positive atmosphere because if you're going to work every day and you're coming back and you feel exhausted and defeated, you're not going to be able to do what you do so Her well. Her story inspires me because she had it made. Like, she could have easily retired over into the seven figures. Like, she she didn't have to make this change in her career. Yeah. But she's like, I'm going to challenge myself. Yeah. And then she did it. And then recently we just found out, like, she's exploded in business. Oh, exploded. And so now they, and it wasn't even the thing is, it was just realigning, you know, eliminating a couple of people, retaining the vast majority of the staff, and then showing them who she was and what her values were, and then aligning with that. And now they have what they've exploded with three new dentists this uh, January. They opened up a second location. I mean, it's just beyond she told me it was beyond their wildest dreams and that's because they took a chance yeah no that's what i'm saying we 
We have bad client stories, horse current stories, and then we have some really good ones too. But you can't be in business if you don't experience the good, the bad, and the ugly of working with customers. You know? Exactly. Have you ever seen the chart less as like the emotional roller coaster of an entrepreneur that kind of goes like this? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I feel it every single day. Yeah, you should definitely Google it. Well, um, and a lot of the things are, you know, it's not it's things that we could learn from that we could have prevented. Like we said before, if we had a stat, like, you know, from, from now we look back and we're like, yeah, if we had communicated better, if we had set those boundaries up, if we had organized, like now, I think another thing is we know when to walk away from a customer so that mm-hmm. it, if it's not a good fit, we're at the point where we, we don't need to take on that business. And even though, I mean, there took, have been times. And it took time to get to this point. Yeah. It didn't happen over the, like from yesterday to today. No. And sometimes it's a stretch. I mean, we've we've walked on on big, big projects that could have made a huge difference financially in our lives. But you were talk- so yeah, if you guys yeah. tuned in a couple episodes ago, Emma said this briefly. We had the opportunity to work with a really big business and develop a 60K plus website. Yeah. And that's just on the website. Plus, we were, I think it was like another like 60 to 100K on the back end. And for then there the, was an app and all yeah. of this stuff. It was, a, it was a really big opportunity. Exactly. That could take us to like a, make a massive financial impact on our lives and our business. Yeah. And I don't even know what happened. Like, I, it was complicated. They Misogyny. Ha- I don't think it was that complicated. Yeah. They didn't want to work with, honestly, a female. And I'm like, I'm so confused. I'm like, why don't you want to work with my business partner? She's an expert. She's like, we want to talk to you. I'm like, great. I, you can talk to me. Do I know what's exactly what's going on? <laughs> no, but I can have finesse it. Yes. Is that going to benefit you? No. And I was fully transparent with them. I'm like, I don't want to understand. And then at the end of the day, I got so, I want to say this, I got upset. Like, I, got, I was like, bro, this makes no sense. I was like, listen, if you refuse to give the respect to Emma, you know what I'm saying? And if you want to work with us because you've seen her quality of work and you see what we've done and they're a referral, I was like, you're going to have to accept that she's going to lead this project. <laughs> you're going to accept that she is the expert because I can finesse it all day you want, but I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go play, like, those telephone games. Like, Emma, how do you actually do this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Versus, like, just working directly. And, you were, and he called me. You called me. You were like, I'm, we're not doing this. And yeah. I, I could not believe it that you walked away willingly. And it just it made all the difference in the world because you said, I'm not, they don't respect you, and I, I don't want to put up with that. To me, respect is really big. Like, at the end of the day, you respect me and respect you, you're going to create. You know what I'm saying? The moment you disrespect me or my staff, that's a different story. Yeah. And now we also are really aligned on on our values and what is important to us and quality of work is here. So that's another thing is that when people come to work with us, it's like, yeah, this is what you're going to get. But this is also the steps that it takes to get there with the communication and the process and the organization. And Yeah. yeah. Any final thoughts on customers and, you know? At the end of the day, sales solve all our problems in business, but understanding who you're selling to, and then is there an equal exchange of value, right? Monetary, money's not everything. It's sometimes, it's like I was just saying, it's sometimes more about, like, the knowledge gained on that project. The opportunity. The opportunities yeah. presented to us. Um, and at the end of the day, customers are human beings. We're human beings. So if you have these proper lines of communications and you understand what they're going through, yeah, understanding where people are coming from. Yeah. And also making sure you work with people that actually value what you provide. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we live in the age of the internet. People can go find a cheaper option somewhere else. Mm-hmm. No matter what, if you are in the United States of America, you're not going to be the cheapest option. So you have to do something better or different. And anytime that someone comes to you and then they try to say, well, I can go get this elsewhere. So yeah, you, you can, but... I know why you're here. You want to work with us. Yeah, I'm honestly grateful for every single client that we have worked with because I have learned something from them or by proxy, I have, you know, the experience has taught me something not to do in the future. I agree. We have a large number of our clients that have come back around that originally work with my dad maybe 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, and now have come back. Or we are now starting to see, because I've been here for five years, and now you three years, they started working with us in our early days. And then they would come back, hey, you did this website for me. And I'm like, I think it's been four years. I? That's kind of wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, time flies. Yeah. No, I'm honestly very grateful for the clients that we work with and the projects that we've been a part of. And yeah. I'm excited to see 
2024, what projects we get into this Heck year. Heck yeah. So if you have any interesting stories or insights you want to share, drop them in the comments below. And if you want to share this information, of course, like and subscribe, follow along, because uh, <laughs> we're going to share the stuff that we wish we knew, and hopefully they'll help all those other business owners out there. Exactly. Thanks. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>